Hello and welcome to another Verity Precision technical session. My name is Frank Whitmer and today we are going to talk about the Phoenix Contact ILC 2050 uh, inline controller uh, shell mode and the uh, restoring factory defaults with a factory reset. As we've shown in our uh, previous Tech Tuesday video, um, the ILC 2050 has a USB diagnostic port labeled USB 1, which is a mini USB port that is used to access shell and also gives you um, browser access to be able to go in and look at the I.O. that's in line with the controller and also to see uh, and change the uh, various settings of the uh, ILC 2050. And uh, the basics of it is uh, you're connecting with a mini USB cable. And when you connect to the controller with your laptop, you're actually going into a, a Telnet session. Uh, so when you plug in, the, uh, the ILC automatically becomes 172.16, I'm sorry, 172.16.0.10. And its Telnet port is 23. So the, um, the connection is a new connection on your computer and the IP addressing will already be set up for you. So once you go into PuTTY uh, and you set it up as a Telnet session, again, uh, the host, host name or the IP address is 172.16.0.10 with a port of 23. And once you go in there, you will uh, come up with this screen here that uh, will give you various... Uh, information of the host ID, uh, software versions, IP addressing, and then menu options. So in the shell mode and looking at it from PuTTY, uh, the menu has 11 items that you can work with and uh, various ones are very similar as to what we would do with a, a standard uh, JACE. You can set the uh, system time, IP settings, uh, this device has a four port switch built on it. So you can do your switch configuration from there, um, assigning each of the ports and you can set it up for ring topology if necessary. Uh, you also can invoke a, um, of the ability to IP, uh, ping an IP address. So you can verify that the ILC 2050 is talking to and can reach other devices. So you're able to ping those devices from here. Uh, the next part, and we're going to be doing this today, is the uh, FTP, uh, SF, SFTP um, enabling to allow you to go in with a, um, a FTP client such as FileZilla to uh, access the file space in the uh, ILC 2050. You can change the uh, IO server port settings. Um, you can re default uh, restore the Sedona um, application and kits. Uh, another part we'll do today is reset platform credentials. We'll go through that process. And then also part of it is a you can do a reboot or exit out of the Telnet session. So one of the things that usually comes up with tech support is I don't remember my platform username and password. Um, how do I re return to that? Well, with the ILC 2050, which is different than the uh, JS8000, um, you are able to go into shell and reset your platform credentials without doing any major surgery or resets or anything like that. So you have the ability to, with uh, option 10, to reset the credentials. And what this does for you is it'll reset the username to Sysmic, the password to Intesis, Intisa, and one thing it does not do, it does not reset the passphrase. So the passphrase is locked down more so. And if you know what the passphrase is, you can always go in the platform once you reset your platform credentials and change your passphrase there. But if you do not know it, one of the, the procedure we're going to go through today is how to reset back to factory defaults. And that would be your way of uh, going through and resetting your passphrase. Um, so with that, if you don't know your passphrase, or if you're unable to connect to your ILC 2050, whether it's typically, you know, you can't get to platform. If you can't get this to platform, you're not going to get to station. Um, on the ILC, there are quite a few um, troubleshooting 
uh, LEDs. And one specific one, the PL LED, is show, shows that the daemons are running and how loaded they are. Um, so if that if that um, LED is turned off, it means the daemons aren't running and you will not be able to access the platform. Uh, if you ever get into that position, it's most likely uh, that you're going to need to do a wipe of the controller or a factory restore uh, using a uh, the clean distribution uh, file uh, for this controller. And as you can see here in this screenshot, um, the file that gets used is the uh, Linux distribution file for the uh, ILC 2050, or in here they call it an SCA3. So in preparation for doing this factory restore, um, again, you need to locate that clean disk file. You're going to copy it to a place, to a location that you can easily get to, uh, rename it to a zip file, and then um, copy out of the uh, NPSDK updates folder. You're going to copy out the upgrade sys crypt file, and it's uh, shown here. So you want to put that in a location that's easily accessible so that when you go in with FileZilla, you're able to get grab it and then copy it to the um, ILC 2050. The next step in that process is you have to enable FTP uh, or, F or SS SFTP, depending on the, um, the uh, I guess not the age, but the, uh, the level of software uh, versioning that's in the ILC 2050 from the factory. Uh, the one I'm playing with here, the option is FTP. So you would enable the FTP to be able to go with FileZilla to copy that, uh, that crypt file into the uh, controller. Once you've done that, uh, you're able to log in with, uh, we use FileZilla as the FTP client. Uh, it's part of freeware and it's uh, easy to work with. Uh, you're going to be logging into FileZilla. If you have FTP enabled, you're going to be using the username admin with no password. If you've enabled SFTP, the username is SFTP user, and the password is something that you defined when you enabled the SFTP for the uh, controller. And as you can see over here, uh, the screenshot is for FTP, um, with port 21 for FTP. Once you log in, you're going to find in the FTP version that there is only one uh, root directory and there's no other subfolders under there. Uh, that's where you're going to be copying the uh, crypt file. Uh, the .cryPT file will be going there. Um, if you've enabled SFTP, you're going to find um, various folders on this remote site or on the controller. And this uh, file will get copied to the home Sysmic Niagara NPSDK updates folder. So you're going to copy that there. Once you copy the file over to the uh, ILC 2050, you're going to do a reboot of the um, of the controller so you would go back into your um, putty and select reboot in the uh, menu and allow it to reboot and it's going to take a few minutes for it to restore factory defaults um, and you'll see that with the indications on the LED that it's working through it and it'll cycle through the LEDs in a pattern just over and over again until eventually the PL LED should be uh, just flashing once every second, showing that the daemon is loaded. And once that happens, you would be able to go into um, the ILC 2050 with platform to be able to do your commissioning. And since it's restoring factory defaults, um, the first thing that Workbench is going to have you do is uh, set up a new platform user because it's going to remove the, uh, the Sysmic user and uh, have you set up a password for that and then also uh, to create a passphrase for the controller. And once that's done, then you'd be able to go in to do a commission, um, copying the license file over and copying your station and, and necessary uh, modules as well as any kind of uh, uh, core software that's required by that controller. And uh, basically that is the entire procedure for, for doing that. Um, so from here, we'll move into being able to, uh, I guess, show you a live uh, version of this. Okay, so now we have our workbench open, and I've uh, 
logged in the platform and went to the distribution file installer, <clears throat> you select cleaning at the bottom, it'll take you to the folder where the clean disk files are located. And uh, as you can see here, it's going to be under Phoenix Contact, under their software folder and clean disk. And the file we're looking for is this lnx.dist file. Uh, so the next step would be to copy this to a place where you uh, can access it to uh, to use it with the uh, uh, with the process. So what I've done is I've copied the um, distribution file to a separate folder. And what we could do here is actually go in, rename it to a .zip file, and then when you go in there. You'll see two folders and you want to go in the updates folder. You're going to select the crypt file. You're going to copy it and then just copy it out to the, uh, to the, to the hard drive somewhere. Like I said, where you can easily access it to, uh, to be able to copy it into the controller with uh, FileZilla. So I've copied it just here under a temp directory on my uh, drive C. So now that we have that in place, before we can go to FileZilla and actually log in uh, with FTP to copy the file, we need to enable uh, FTP. So to do that, uh, what we need to do is launch PuTTY. And we're going to go into a Telnet session. And I already have a saved session. So if I say load, you'll see that I have the IP address of 172.16.0.10. That IP address will never change. That's the debug uh, port on the ILC 2050 and, and uh, so you always will have access to that controller from that port. Um, the uh, FTP port, or the Telnet port is 23 and with that we should be able to just do an open and it brings us to this session window here. I would hit enter and you will see our menu options. The first part we talked about was resetting the platform credentials which was just your username and password of your platform you would select number 10 to do that. So we could go something like this, enter. Are you sure? Yes. And your platform credentials are reset back to Sysmic and Intisa. Now the next step we want to do is instead of that, we don't know, we didn't remember our password either, or I'm sorry, we didn't know our, we don't really, know, really remember our passphrase. So to recover that, we're going to go in and enable FTP option six. We want to say, okay, it is showing enabled already. So because I had already enabled it, it's now saying, do you want to disable it? And to disable, no. So just watch and read the text that's with it. So it looks like it's a, a trick question. Um, so now with that, we want to go and launch our FileZilla. And with FileZilla, we are going to be putting in that IP address and I have it saved. So typically what you're going to do is you're, it's already logging in, but 172.16.0.10. The username again is admin, no password for FTP. The FTP port is 21. And then we would just say quick connect. So maybe the menu item back here didn't do what I wanted. So let's try this again. This time I'll say yes and see if that makes a difference. No. Okay, so we click on Quick Connect and we have logged into FileZilla or logged into the controller <coughs> via FileZilla FTP. And the only uh, folder is the root folder uh, in the controller. So at this point, what we need to do is just copy that crypt file over to the ILC 2050. And it is a 102 meg file, so we have to wait for it to uh, copy completely over there. And then once that is done, then we'll be able to go back to uh, shell and tell it that it can reboot. Okay, now that it's done, we can go ahead and 
Come here, choose 11, reboot. Are you sure? Yes. And the, um, the controller will now go through the uh, process of restoring all the factory defaults. Uh, it's going to put in a clean image, so it wipes everything out, the station modules, everything that was in there. It's going to reset your platform credentials, meaning your username and password, and it's going to also uh, reset the passphrase, so you can re-enter that once you go in with the platform. So at this point, we'll wait for this to come back, and then we'll log in with platform. Okay, as we're waiting for this to come back, one other thing that we can do to make it easier to know when it's ready is to actually just go in and we can ping the, we can go ahead and ping it. So if we do, okay, so in, in, in this scenario here, it is back. We have a response, so we can exit out of there. Okay, let's go in with the uh, secure platform, Sysmic, as I mentioned, and Intisa. And give this a moment to come back. And it comes up with the uh, wizard for uh, changing the platform default. So as it shows here, we're going to be assigning a passphrase, a new platform account and then the password for that account. So we'll start with the passphrase. And then we'll add a username and then assign its password. And next, done. So then at this point, we would be able to go to platform administration, go there now, and then be able to um, commission the uh, controller. And from here, you can say it's uh, when we re reverted it back or re reset it back to factory defaults, it went back to 4.2. So when we do the commission, it's going to be uh, installing the core software and whatnot for the current version of, of Niagara. So we would end up going, end up going to commissioning and follow through with uh, the commissioning. You want to make sure you have your license file and um, station and go from there. Uh, so that was everything I wanted to show today. And um, thank you for your time. Thank you for your business. We do appreciate you and have a great day. Thank you.